Oh, a story out of China. I found this really fascinating, right? So uh, AI is, is one of the big technologies of the future, big technologies of the present, and, and a lot of money is flowing into it. Uh, for a long time, it was thought that China had a real advantage in AI, uh, that China had invested a huge amount in AI, and there was a lot of very sophisticated uh, Chinese AI uh, companies, and I think that's probably true. Uh, among other things, uh, the AI in China has a lot of information from which to to learn, if you will, learn in quotes, um, because there are no privacy, there are fewer privacy considerations, and and they can just they can just get all the government information, get all the all the information that's on the Chinese internet and uh, 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 um, on uh, Alibaba and WeChat and things like that. Um, but of course, uh, this kind of innovation is is a real threat to a regime like China. What is the chat GPT, the Chinese chat GPT, going to say about uh, different political systems? What is it going to answer to a variety of different questions about different regimes? What about the history of China? Uh, I mean, this regime spends a lot of effort to try to whitewash the history, to try to whitewash Mao Zedong, to make Tiananmen Square just disappear. Well, what if chat GPT discovers? I mean, the equivalent of chat GPT in China discovers the truth about these things, and, and releases them. And in anticipation of this, uh, Beijing is moving to rein in China's chatbots. Um, uh, you know, the government is committed to keeping a tight regulatory control over technology, uh, a technology that's going to change the world. It's going to change the world moving forward. Um, so that, uh, I think yesterday, the, the Cyberspace Administration of China unveil draft rules for uh, generative artificial intelligence, for chat GPT-like <clears throat> uh, 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 applications. According to the regulations, company must heed the Chinese Communist Party strict censorship rules. So censorship will be applied to AI. Just as websites and apps have to avoid publishing material, that uh, besmirches China's leaders or rehashes forbidden history, the same is going to apply to AI. So imagine all those brilliant engineers working on uh, machine learning, and and uh, and now they have to insert into um, into all the code rules about what the ChatGPT-like product can say, can't say what history it can look at, what history it cannot look at. These rules, I'm sure, evolving as the bureaucracy in China, uh, the regulators decide uh, various issues. I mean, just think of the energy, the effort, the time, the, the brain power devoted to censoring technology. Energy, brain power, they could have been devoted to enhancing it, to making it better, to driving it forward. This is exactly why I'm not too concerned about China leapfrogging, leapfrogging the United States technology-wise. Um, the content of AI systems will need to reflect, quote, socialist core values and avoid information that undermines, quote, state power or national unity. What does any of that mean? What are socialist core values? What undermines state power? What undermines national unity? Do you want to take a risk as a programmer that any of that, that, that your product violates any of these things? Sounds pretty risky to me. You might land up in jail or worse. Means you're going to put in all kinds of constraints on the software, all kinds of limitations on what it should, could do. Think about how that slows progress, slows innovation. What is it? It's force applied to the human mind. It's a gun pointed at your forehead. Don't mess with state power. You know, God forbid anything that your product says doesn't reflect socialist core values. Force paralyzes. Censorship paralyzes. And it brings about lousy technology, it brings about, you know, failure to innovate, progress, succeed, 
grow. All the things we're afraid of China for, it's not going to happen because of these kind of things. Companies will have to make sure their chatbots create words and pictures, words and pictures that are truthful and respect intellectual property. Truthful, truthful based on socialist core values and respect intellectual property of Chinese, not clear if they will respect intellectual property rights of anybody else, given the Chinese government doesn't respect the intellectual property rights of anybody else. And they'll all be required to register their algorithms they, um, with regulators. Now, this is part of a story out of the New York Times, published, I know I'm not supposed to cite the New York Times, forgive me, published yesterday, um, a fascinating story about the, the growing regulatory appetite um, uh, growing regulatory appetite of the Chinese government when it comes to AI. Um, uh, the, these are not final rules. They expect that these rules will change after consultation with Chinese tech companies. Um, they could soften uh, the rules, uh, but, but they're not going to undermine the basic principles of, um, uh, of censorship. Indeed, the fact that these are not final rules just again suggests the uncertainty the Chinese regulations like this create for the industry, uh, fear and uncertainty that could only, again, harm progress, innovation, and, and, um, uh, and success. So, it, you know, there's, there's plenty of reason here to, uh, to believe that the United States is going to have a significant and dramatic and maybe long-term lead over over the Chinese um, over over Chinese companies because of these kind of regulations. Um, all right. That I thought was interesting, and and, you, and, and again, both interesting and kind of following the path that I've been talking about in terms of what happens to Chinese innovation. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.